Hello everyone, it's L678 here. Today we're going to take a look at bad nicks and enemies in Sonic GDK. We're going to take a look at the three actors that make up a bad nick in the game. The first one we're going to talk about is the pawn. So to place a pawn in the in the level, if you go into actor classes in the content browser, Sonic GDK, invisible pawn templates, and enemy pawn. If you drag this into the level, this will appear. What this is, this actor keeps the information that you need for a bad nick in one place. So for every bad nick you create, or every type of bad nick, you would need one of these. So what does it actually do? Well, as you can see, it's got a basic uh, GDK template mesh on there. To change this, you have to go to visible mesh and change it with something. I'm going to change it with a Sonic model just because it's the most easily recognizable. So I'm just going to search for Sonic. Just going to change it with the basic Sonic GDK one. So with that selected, there we go. So now when we actually play this, the badnik will appear as Sonic. And to get it to animate, obviously you need to set all these things to whatever you, whatever your badnik is. So the anim tree has to be obviously Sonic. It's the uh, anim set, the physics asset, etc. So I'm just going to set that now. Right, so all this is set. To change the size, obviously you've got the primitive component scale part here. We're just going to change that. In fact, we're going to change it to 5 so that we can actually differentiate this between Sonic when we play the game. Now if you see this green mesh around, this is how this is the collision mesh. It's basically this badnik will only collide here. If we were to spawn this in the game, well, he'd only be walking on his knees. So you go to collision mesh, and you can change the height and the radius here. So change this to that will do. Now these are the settings. I'll go into a bit more detail in the second half of this video where I deal with more advanced badniks, but you've got damage zones. This would be similar to a boss where you can only where it's, no sorry. This would be similar to a boss like think of the egg uh, the death egg robot in Sonic 2 with the spike arms. You would have a damage zone on each arm, basically highlighting that you can't hit him there, you will get hurt. Shoot slots pretty much the same. This would determine where an enemy would shoot from. This is important especially with meshes like uh, jets or buzz bombers, anything like that where there's an obvious turret. If this isn't set and you've got it to fire, what will happen is it will come from the center of the mesh rather than say if you want it to come from the arms. But I'll go into that later on. Weak spots, exactly the same. If you want a bad nick to be only uh, vulnerable to hits from the head, you would set that. But I'll go into that later. Miscellaneous. Ghost collision. It basically this means that when it hits the player, you can actually still pass through it instead of being pushed constantly. Quite useful in um, 2D games. And the rest of these are fairly self-explanatory. Stats. Again, this is fairly self-explanatory. It's just speed sight information so when you have a go at this just change this itself 400 there so now we've got the pawn in the level what's the next actor the second one would be the spawner spawner is under invisible enemy spawner info drag that in 
and there we have it. This actor is basically what actually creates this mesh, this badnik in the level. And for the first thing you should always do is set the pawn template. So if we click on our pawn again, we know it's called SGDK Enemy Pawn 2. So under pawn template, SGDK Enemy Pawn 2. Now what will happen is when this is spawned, it will load all the information for this badnik and it will appear. So what things can we change on here? Well the first thing, enemy class. If you see we've got all these different types of enemies here. If you want it, it's a little bit self-explanatory. If you want it to walk, it's walking. If you want it to be stuck in the water, swimming, flying. These are the ones like interpolating and enemy pawn are more for the advanced badniks that we'll deal with in the second part. These are the ones like Bluminator, Orbinaut, these have been added as GDK is advanced and if you don't have a proper Bluminator pawn or an Orbinaut pawn it just won't work. But anyway, we're going to set this to walking. Preview mesh. Basically this is just for editing convenience. You can actually change how this sprite looks. So if we just go back and put this as Sonic, again it's strictly for um, editing convenience. See now this will appear instead of that, well on top of the sprite. So if you've got a lot of bad nicks in your level and you just want to copy and paste various things, you know exactly what this bad nick is now. The rest of this set, these settings in the preview mesh, you can just ignore them. Now, a lot of these again, like I've said before, fairly self-explanatory. Disabled means that it will not work. This badnik will never spawn until the spawner actor is enabled in Kismet. That's again another more advanced thing. Check timer. Basically what this means is this actor will constantly check for where it basically checks for Sonic's presence in the level. This just changes how quickly this happens. It's more of a thing for 3D where if you can see the badnik as it spawns then you might want to have this very very low, so 0 0.1 with a massive radius. Basically max check. If you're in this radius it will spawn it but if you're within if you're too close to it basically, it won't work now. So if I'm within 1000 units, it will not spawn. So, chase players, control return, etc. This is fairly obvious. Now, patrol points. What is this? Basically, you can set up a patrol path within GDK so your badniks will follow path. Now we've just set a walking one here, so for walking we want to use a path node. If you search you can find path node. There. So we just drag this in and you get this little apple sprite. So what I'm going to do is set up a little patrol path there, to there, to there, and then back. So now we've got the path nodes in place, we know there's four patrol points, so if we click on the add new item, press it four times, so what was the first one? Path node one. And all you do is you just type in the name of each path node.
So for the, for the purposes of this first video, these are the two actors that we are interested in. So now we want to see this in game. We're going to move the start up to the top of this little mesh. If you create a bad nick with a path, you've got to build the AI path, otherwise it won't do anything or it will just become confused. So everything is in place. So let's give it a look. And then we can see it's following the path that we've given it. So, again, just to highlight what we can do with this, we can go with chase players, play again, and as soon as he sees me, he should. There we go. And that will continue until you either destroy him or Sonic is killed. So that's a walking enemy. What if we make it flying? Now, when you're making a flying path, path nodes are not really suitable. I have found when I'm building paths, what tends to happen is if my path is here, when I build it, it will snap back to the nearest ground mesh. So for this type of badnik, we use a volume path node. And we're just going to replace it with a volume path node. Remember to build the paths again. Turn chase players off. Now if you've noticed, when I've built the paths, these haven't snapped back down. Like I said, we have about path nodes. Chances are it probably will have done that. Now, the Anim tree that I've selected is detecting that uh, phys physics flying is in power at the moment, which is why the animations have correctly changed to dash or fall or whatever it is that um, is set up in the animation tree to play. That's why it looks like he's flying. And really, there's not much else to say on the, about this basic level. You can change the plane constraint normal. Basically this will force the badnik to only move in one direction be it the x, y or the z axis. Now sometimes I've found issues with this, especially in Sonic Incursion. Sometimes it will the badnik will stutter on the spot or refuse to move. I personally just leave it as it is. Really there's not much else to say at this level. It's a, there's a lot of um, experimenting that's involved with this so I urge you to give this a go play around with it yourself and see what you can come up with now you might have re realized that I did say three actors so the third actor is the badnik itself when it is spawned now we're in the editor we don't actually see this badnik and it 
can't be manipulated normally. It can only be manipulated in Kismet. And Kismet is how we are going to make a custom Babnik in the next video. But just to highlight how we do this, we need to use a blank Kismet variable node. So with the spawner selected, right click in an empty space, new event, use an enemy spawner, spawn. And if you right click on this link, create new object variable, and there's nothing here. This node is blank. What happens is when the enemy is spawned, it fills this variable with the badnik, which can then be manipulated through various other Kismet nodes. So, for example, if we right click, new action, Sonic GDK, start animation, link it up to spawned, and the target is the badnik. We're going to make this animation loop, and the animation name is Transformation. This is actually taken from the anim set that the badnik is. So if you type in Transformation and there is no Transformation animation on the bad in the badnik's anim set, nothing will happen. So let's give it a go, and it's looping. It's playing the transformation animation as it as it's going through the level. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and that's a completely basic look at Badniks in Sonic GDK. Thank you.